To get started, we're going to take a Fusion Composition clip directly to the Fusion page. Let's uh, bring in a Text Plus node, uh, which is arguably one of the most commonly used nodes in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Okay, so let's write our text and then we're going to bring up the size a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is to click into the text box and then we're going to right click. And then in the menu, we're going to be greeted by a slew of different features that we can leverage. Now, we went over character level styling in the past, but in this video, I want to focus on follower, text scramble, text timer, as well as time code. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, just click follower, and then we're going to click the modifiers tab. So the follower is essentially a feature that allows us to delay the text animation. Uh, what we have here is, first of all, the duration of the delay. We can change it to negative uh, or a positive number. We can also change the delay type to either a delay between each character or a delay between first and last character. We can also change the order of the delay as well uh, from uh, left to right or right to left or inside out or random. Uh, so let's look at a few examples now and that should give us a uh, better idea. So let's click on shading, let's go to position and then let's uh, keyframe the offset setting. Uh, let's ignore the path section. Let's just uh, come back to follower. Let's move this text out of screen and then let's come over a few frames to the right and then let's just uh, bring this text back up uh, to the middle there. So if we look at the animation right now, it's just the text going from the bottom to the middle. Now let's uh, come to the timing tab and let's change the delay uh, to one frame. So now as you can see the same animation, now each character is being delayed by one frame. So that's really what this uh, follower uh, feature is doing. And if we change the order, uh, you can see now the instead of going from right uh, left to right, it's now going from left, uh, or it's going from right to left. And uh, if we change the delay to let's say now three frames, you can see the delay effect is more pronounced now. We can also change the delay to let's say a negative number. So now you're going to see that some uh, of the characters are going to appear much earlier uh, than uh, what we saw uh, before. Okay, so let's uh, now come to Spline Editor. We can change the interpolation of this animation as well. Uh, so let's play with that. Uh, you can see now if we do that, this effect is looking a lot, a lot better. It's looking much slicker. Uh, so let's continue to play with this and see uh, you know, what we can get. Uh, but uh, that's the idea. But one thing I am actually noticing is that if you look at the letter X and T, it seems to have a little bit of jitter. So. Let's go ahead and uh, fix that so that that doesn't happen. Uh, what we're going to do then is to uh, right click uh, the uh, render percentage uh, and then we're going to uh, in the menu select purge cache. So let's look at this animation again. Now it's looking much, much better. There's another thing I want to demonstrate uh, here. So let's go back to shading and we're going to reset the offset setting. Now let's go to text instead and the keyframe size, let's bring that down to zero and let's move a few frames over to the right and then bring the size uh, setting uh, back up again. And now let's go to timing. Uh, here we're going to change the duration of the delay to let's say two frames instead of three. So if we were to play this right now, guys, you guys can see that uh, uh, the sizing itself is being delayed between each character. And then that's a pretty cool effect. We can also change the delay type to between first and last character to see how that looks. Uh, let's change the duration of delay actually. Let's move that up to five. So now this is looking uh, much, much better. We can also play with a spline editor, uh, change up the animation if that's something that uh, you wanna do. Uh, but for now, what we're gonna do is just restore everything, reset all the settings because there's another thing I wanna show you guys. So let's go to shading, and then we're going to keyframe opacity, bring that down to zero. Let's move a few frames over to the right and bring the opacity uh, setting back to one. Let's go to timing, 
and change the delay duration to three frames, change delay type back to between each character, and let's change the water to uh, random, but one by one. So now if we were to play this, you guys see that we have now a delayed uh, text appearance effect, which is something that can be very handy for creating cinematic uh, title sequence. So yeah, uh, follower is definitely a very, very powerful hidden feature. Okay, so now let's move on to look at the text scramble feature. Let's right click the text box and in the menu select text scramble and then we're going to the modifiers tab. Here, the first thing to note is the substitute characters box. This is where we can choose what characters we want to replace the original characters with. So in this example, we're just going to use all the capital letters, but it's really up to you to decide what characters you want here. Uh, another thing uh, to note is the randomness slider up top. Uh, that is where we can decide how many of the original characters are going to be uh, replaced by the substitute characters. So if we were to, let's say, uh, use a one, uh, what that means is 100% of the original characters will be replaced. And if we were to go with, let's say, 0 0.5, that means only 50% uh, will be replaced. And of course, zero means none. Uh, so let's uh, bring this uh, back to 100%. Uh, and if we were to play this right now, you guys will see that all the characters are going to be replaced. And that is kind of our random text effect. Uh, and uh, if we were to, let's say, also uncheck the time box, uh, that, as you can see, is going to stop the randomness from happening. So it is important that uh, we leave the time box checked. Okay, so now let's go ahead and animate this. We're going to keyframe randomness slider. And then we're going to move a few frames over to the right and then we're going to keyframe again but this time we're going to bring it down to uh, zero so if we were to play this right now guys this is pretty much our animated random text effect uh, another thing to note uh, is that uh, if we were to overwrite this with a much higher number uh, which you can totally do you're going to see that this is going to sort of make the randomness last a little bit longer so it's going to make this effect a little more a little more prominent uh, so that's also pretty cool. And one last thing I want to showcase here is that if we were to bring the randomness uh, slider to just 100% and then let's uh, write another piece of text right next to our original text in the text box, uh, you guys will see that uh, right now if we were to play this, all the characters are going to be replaced, which is great. It's working as expected. Uh, but also the space in between the two characters, in between the two texts is being preserved. But we can change this. We can uncheck the don't change spaces box. Now, as you can see, even the space in between the two texts is going to be now replaced uh, with the uh, one of the substitute characters. So this is something that you can definitely play with to put a flare on the random text effect. Lastly, we can create a timer or countdown straight from the text node. Uh, so first things first, let's right click the text box and then in the menu, uh, choose time code this time. And then let's go to the modifiers tab. Uh, first thing you will see is that we now have time displayed in the time code format. Uh, and we can easily change this format by checking and on, checking hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. This is uh, completely uh, up to you. Uh, another thing to note is the frames per second setting. Uh, this tells the system how many frames are going to be counted as a uh, one second. So right now it's going to be 24, which is the system default on my machine. Uh, but uh, if we play this uh, right now, you will see that the timer itself is working as is uh, expected, which is great. Uh, but at the 24th frame, that is going to be where the one second mark is going to be. If we change this to 12, now at the 12th uh, frame, that is going to be uh, the one second mark. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, if we were to change the start offset to let's say one second, so now the timer is going to start at one second instead of zero. So you also have the flexibility there to choose uh, at what point do you want the timer uh, to start. Now let's once again, right click the text box and then we're going to in the menu select text timer instead of time code. And then let's go to the modifiers tab. So now you're gonna see that we have the ability to create something similar. Uh, so first of all, under the mode menu, we can choose countdown timer or clock. If we choose a clock, you're gonna see that we have actually the real time displayed here. Uh, but let's say we were to choose uh, a, a countdown instead and then hit the start button. This will actually initiate a countdown right away uh, based on the time settings that you have uh, below. Uh, we can also choose, let's say timer instead and then hit the start button. Once again, this will initiate a timer uh, instead of a countdown uh, based on the time setting that you have 
uh, below. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, we can also change the format very easily, like how we could with time code. We can also animate this. So uh, let's right now go ahead and animate, uh, let's say the minutes setting. Uh, so we're going to keyframe and then we're going to move a few frames over to the right and then we're going to write five. So now this is going to give you a, a count up from one minute to five minutes. Uh, we can do this with other settings too, like for example, seconds. So let's uh, go ahead and keyframe uh, seconds. We're going to bring this up to let's say 60 and then we're going to move a few frames over to the right and then we're going to keyframe again. We're going to write at this time uh, zero, just bring it down to zero actually. So now you're gonna see that we have a countdown timer that goes from uh, uh, 59 all the way down to zero. So this is pretty interesting. It's an alternative to the time code uh, that we used earlier but it also has a few unique features of its own. And very quickly, before we wrap up, let's delete this. And then we're going to right click the text box. And in the menu, we're going to choose time code once again. So what I want to demonstrate here is how easily you can reverse this so that a timer can become a countdown. So let's go to modifiers tab and we're going to quickly set up the timer. Uh, so now if we were to play this, you're going to see the timer is working uh, as expected, uh, which is great. Uh, but if we were to, let's say, go to the tools menu and then we're going to miscellaneous and then under miscellaneous, let's bring in the time speed uh, node and we're going to drop it after text node. And then uh, we're going to go to the time or the speed setting, sorry, the speed setting and then change that to minus one instead. So now you're going to see that we have a countdown instead of a timer. Uh, but the one thing you're also going to notice is that uh, at the very end, it doesn't count down to zero exactly. So to fix that, we can change interpolation mode from blend to nearest. So now that will fix it. We now have a complete countdown uh, all the way down to zero. Okay, well, hey guys, so this is something I want to quickly demonstrate uh, here. I hope this helps and uh, I hope you learned something. As always, uh, I will see you next time.